what's going on everybody welcome back to another live stream today it's gonna be story time and we're gonna be jumping into a game called where the water tastes is like lime it's pretty cool if it actually existed uh, but we did do this a couple weeks ago now I believe and um, it's actually quite interesting it's uh, teaching us about the history of America and uh, yeah, so we're just gonna kind of jump in here and we've got our same thing where do we end up and oh I know the other thing is I wanted to see mm, controls is there sensitivity no no sensitivity thanks thanks very much hmm well that's us because it takes so long for me to do things but whatever. Where are we going anyways? Oh yeah, we came from there. Okay, so I guess we're going to go into this little city. Or whatever the hell this is. Let's go here. Uh, there we go. Nice. Oh, that's a stupid thing to cross over the bridge. Yeah, where the hell am I? Probably on the wrong side of the bridge. Yeah, I want to go back over here. Oh, come on. There we go. Crossover. Now. Are we going? I think we're going the wrong way here. New Orleans. I thought we'd been to New Orleans. Maybe we haven't. And what the hell is this? And why am I here? Hop a train. No, I don't want to hop a train. Enter New Orleans. Nice. So, the French Quarter is overwhelming. You loiter in the shadow of a building that looks like a layer cake and watch the crowds go by. Um, we do need money, so we should probably earn some money. You wander the streets of the city looking for a way to make some cash. They can panhandle. Let's look for work. Digging holes, not what you had in mind, but damn, they're digging a lot of holes in this part. The foreman assigns you a work group in a mix of other disheveled men. Disheveled? I thought it was always disheveled, but whatever. And men, and sends you out to dig a pit by the water pit. Uh. Wait, what? Let's ask what's this about. Nobody wants to say. A young woman keeps mouthing something to you across the hole, but you can't make it out. What is she saying? Dear Lobby? Dave Hobby? Dean Bobber? You never get anyone to admit what this is all about. But you do get paid pretty okay. Noise. Now, let's go explore. Lenny's Antiques has a heady smell. Ooh. Polish, maybe. Or incense. Sunlight doesn't penetrate the blacked-out windows. The place is crammed with furniture and curios. Nice. The woman behind the counter beckons you over. Uh-oh. I know the look of you. I know what you're here for. You do? <laughs> she sets a tray on the counter. On it sits a hodgepodge of stitched leather pouches of various shapes and sizes. Some have neck or wrist straps looped through them. She waves a hand across the display. Good luck, Charms. You don't say. I don't want your money. You got something better. She licks her lips, holds out a flat palm. Whoa, okay. Whoa. All right, well, you know, I'm hard up for cash, and I kind of want one of these good luck charms. Her knife is fast. She slices a thin line across your palm then snatches your hand and squeezes. She catches the welling blood in a murky glass vial. Your vision flickers, and as you blink, the place lightens. Sunlight streams through the windows. You oh. are alone. Hot damn. So she was like a witch or something like that? Let's kind of turn up the volume a little bit more for you guys. Right. As you reach the door, a man calls after you. Is this yours? His name badge reads Lenny. 
He's holding up a leather pouch by its strap. You take it and hurry out of the shop. Wow. The woman selling goodest goodest in New Orleans. Let's go to the store. Ooh, jambalaya. What do we want? We don't really need anything, do we? We're full health. We're full Z's. I think we're okay. Shall we hit the train station? Ooh, we can go to Miami. We can visit Sausage. I wonder how far it is to go there. Or how far? Where are we? Oh, no. We'd end up way down here. We'll go down to Miami. What do you think? Or should we just hoof it? I mean, we wouldn't really be a true sailor if we weren't, you know, walking around doing shit. Wait a minute, where are we going? We're headed the wrong way. You put me on the wrong side of the road. You know what? Screw it. Let's go to New Orleans, go to the train station, go to Miami. There. Oh, I want a lot of money! <laughs> Seagulls scream overhead as you mosey down to the beach. Out at sea, ships crawl along the horizon towards the harbor. The sun's a little intense, so you search for a scrap of shade. Hello. I'll turn some money. You wander the streets looking for something to do. Let's look for some work. Feeling good about today, crows the young man in line with you outside this factory. Feeling pretty good. Today's our lucky day. Shut up, Bill. Every time you say that, nobody's hired, shouts the man further back in line. Uh, aside from Bill. The doors burst open. We're taking all comers. Shouts the floor manager. Bill gives a whoop. I knew it. He crows. You cheer along with Bill. Fuck you, Bill. The cynic shouts. <laughs> you had nothing to do with this. Whether or not he did, though, y'all get paid. Nuts. Now I got money again. Just in you case I get hungry. You enjoyed a break on the beach. Sweet. Staring off the edge of the world. But the sun is starting to go down. And the breeze is getting stronger. As you're about to stand, a man plonks down near you. He sits a polite distance off, Sweet. but looks at you expectantly. Well, let's say hi. He smiles weakly. I just got fired. First Spanish-American radio host in the state, and they fired me. They needed to make cuts, I get that, but I'm twice the... He trails off. I don't know what I'm going to tell my wife. Let's be sympathetic to him. I could try the docks, but there's already more men than jobs. Mm -hmm. And I could barely support the family on what they pay. Oh, that sucks. He hangs his head. And my boy. I can't bring myself to tell them. I don't know what to do. Let's put our arm around him and cuddle with he him. He calms as the sun drops below the horizon. An expanse of darkness is ahead of you. Turning back to the lights of the city reminds you that the world hasn't gone away. After a long silence, Ooh, he we're speaks. Gonna give him hope. It's never going to get better, is it? Oh, you never know that, man. It takes you a moment to notice his sobbing over the noise of the waves. I've got to tell them, haven't I? I'll go to the port in the morning and see if they'll take me. You never know, dude. You can no longer make him out in the dark. But his hand touches your shoulder as he leaves. Wow. So we really hoped him. The man in the beach in Miami despairing about the future. <gasps> Root beer. I'll take one of those. We go back to New Orleans or Atlanta. Nope, we can't do any of that. So let's just leave town. Ooh, there. We're going to sit here right by this little campfire. Damn right. It's night time. Time for us to have a little nappy nap. Dupuy. Oh, Dupuy. You look good, honey. You got a light? You like a good story? Damn right. I love a good story. And I got a light. I like to hear about people and make bets with them. Oh, yeah? Want to bet how big it is? I like to hear about the weird, handsome people. Get convinced by the rich jackasses who'll play blackjack and lose into the night. 
dames who are lit cigarettes burning to the end. I'm one of those jackasses who lost at blackjack. <laughs> I want to be around furious people who use me and I use them. Are you one, stranger? I can be. Come close to me. Alright, you want me inside? Hey, got any exciting stories? Like the movies? Damn straight. Uh, let's see. What the hell is exciting? That was joy, love, family, future, past, authority, choice, morality, bondage, no, excitement. Faith, trust. Yeah. But the arsonist who sets fires. Well, well. They should let you make the movies, honey. <laughs> I'm really I good. I won big back in Reno and I got obsessed with luck. Get out. I was drinking absinthe at the time and smoking only darn European cigarettes that made me cough like a mule and boy. <laughs> After that win, I drank the green fairy good and smoked like a redwood bonfire. <laughs> and you know what I learned? What'd you learn? I learned to pick my tables and expect music on the jaw. Shit. Shit. You got any <laughs> stories with a happy ending? <laughs> yeah, the right now, about I want a happy ending. Me too. Anybody know the place around here? Uh, let's see. Joy. Um... Three bottles on its branch. Tell the story of a man who made molasses. The ducks in the hotel fountain. Uh, oh, back. Faith, trust. Wishes come true. The story of John Chapman and his. Oh, oh yeah. The story of the thirsty cotton pickers. Um, well, nope. What the hell? Okay, wait. Tell the story of two men who each mistook each other. No. Two lighthouse keepers. Uh, I think I might do the story of the thirsty cotton pickers. I can't remember. I think that was one. Well, that is a sweet tale. <laughs> Tell a couple more like that, and you'll be a charmer like me. Nah, I could never be that. What do I want? <laughs> what do anyone want? Uh, a reach around? I want to be claimed wholesale by something. Whoa. I want to be consumed. I want to be won. Oh, boy. I want to be the beautiful score, the desire and respect on someone's lips. Okay, now I see where you're going with this. Hell, maybe I can find a job, maybe in some dive bar, serve the old men who will become my friends for life. Get complex somehow with people who are warm. But maybe I'm too blind. Oh, that's not true. I want to laugh. And today, honey, I laugh easy. You gotta have a story that'll do me that favor. I think so. We'll have to check. Give me a second, though. I just want to refresh everything here. Make sure that we're doing okay. There. Making sure everything's all popped up the way it's supposed to be popping up. There, there. Perfect. Okay, so let's pick her a story that'll make her laugh. Uh, family, authority, she wants a funny story. I think we're going to do probably the joy one. 
The duck story. That'll be kind of funny. Quit it, stranger. That sweet nonsense will kill me young faster than the drinking do. Whoa. Guess that I wasn't used the right to choice. think it was adventure, you know? Conversations, curiosity that made me road trip casino to backroom across these United States, but it's the thrill. God, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, the suckers. I love to watch suckers lose. You know, you'd love it too if you came and saw that burning pit in their stomach. It's the want, you see? Mm, not really. Oh, it's beautiful. Take your word for it. Hey, got any exciting stories? Like the movies? Maybe. Um, let's see. We have one. What the hell was it? No, Althea's Blues. The Bridge Builders. I think that's kind of exciting. I remember it being that way. Honey, thrills is the stuff I live on. Mm -hmm. That one will keep me going. Nifty. Then what? Sixteen days ago, I come across a girl by the side of the road. Uh-huh. She had her smoke all bent out of shape in her mouth, and she had a bundle like I used to by her little brown boots. She caught my eye just... just for a little second. And though I ain't got no feeling from her, I smiled to myself because... You bet a lot on leaving the protection of the known, especially when your body our shape. But choosing your challenges? That's freedom. And she knew it, I think. Sounds like... Hey. Got any exciting stories? Oh, like the movies? You and your damn exciting movie story things. Uh. Nope. Blinded to the threat of death. Uh, a woman arrested for bootlegging in Maine. Maybe. Uh, the seagulls. Nope. No, I think it probably be the bootlegging women. We'll try that one. See how that goes. Well, well, they should let you make the movies, honey. Yeah, that's what they all say, including yourself. About five minutes ago. The law. <laughs> I can get by with the law. Right? The law thinks I'm a victim, a sad girl of the streets, a damaged girl, a girl who ain't got no fate and whose daddy didn't love her. Aww. My daddy's dead, and all cops are in my pocket, stranger. I will tell you that if I tell you anything. Okay. The law is bad for us Roman kids. It does not serve us. But you learn to get that sad, pale girl on. They love that. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta promise them something more, and... Well, I don't say it's pleasant, but you born in a body. Sometimes people treat you like you need the power taken from it. Ooh. Next time, let's up the stakes, shall we? Sure. Why don't we spend some time with bourbon and five-card stud? You bring the bourbon, of course. And when the moon's fuller... I might let you in on some secrets on life. Ooh. Have you any? Plenty. Oh man, we got the achievement unlocked. The Gambler. Dupree. New story, Dupree's chapter or tale. So where are we? We're here. Uh, she's up there. Kind of don't really want to go there. So maybe, maybe we could head back to uh, this lovely feller. Mm, so I have to head straight north. This way. Oh, we can walk through that. Cool. And I think what we're going to try to do is we'll hitchhike. Let's see if we can't. I can't remember how to hitchhike. But we will give it a shot. Ooh, something coming up here. Have to figure out what it's all about. Once we get there, 
So as I was saying before, this is all kind of like teaching you a bit about the history of America as you're going through and learning about these people's uh, past and futures and whatnot. Really cool idea for a story. Um, I guess it could be a little bit drawn out having to kind of walk around everywhere, but search. All right. What we got? His smile lights up the room, or rather the cab of the locomotive. <laughs> Folks gather round as he holds the pull cord. He's a showman through and through. You want to cover your ears now for this next part? All right, cover my ears. Sure doesn't help much. Engineer pulls that chain and the whistle blasts inside your skull. He just smiles through it all. <laughs> Man must be half deaf. And now so am I. A round of applause erupts from the small crowd. He passes out bubblegum to the shell-shocked kids, half of them in awe, <laughs> half in tears. Remember now who gets you there on the advertised, Casey Jones. Everyone's all talk as they head back to their seats. That engineer sure is handsome. Gosh, and that whistle sounded just like a whippoorwill, didn't it? Sure did. Ain't this the way to travel? I got the achievement saying it was, so it must have been Casey Jones, the theatrical railroader. So there was no railroad, damn it, I'm still in the same location. Son of a bitch, he robbed me of it. Wait, there's nobody riding up the coast of uh, Miami here, nobody gonna help me out? Come on now. I think we tried hitch hitchhiking once, and we failed, so... Hopefully, we will get the opportunity to do such again. If not, we got this next little town coming up here on the left-hand side. Pretty much straight ahead of us. So, we'll check that out. Oh, Jacksonville. I know where that is. I've been there before. Florida, we're heading back in towards Georgia. It's just about nighttime, too. Might have to find a fire. Oh, I think I see one. It's a little ways up, so it might take us a couple days to walk there, but... Okay, let's go in here. Hear a story. Let's search that first, and then the we'll hear a story. The soldier sits in the dirt with his legs splayed out, like a child would sit. Beneath the tattered fabric of his antique uniform, several open wounds fester in the hot sun. Lend a hand, traveler? Yeah, let's ask about the wind. It's a ambush. I'm the only survivor. Even killed the horses. Got him mad with what we pulled off in Lawrence. As the soldier talks, blood rises from his wounds like plumes of red smoke. Damn. Lawrence the town, not the fella. <laughs> Rounded up anyone old enough to hold a gun and burn the place down. Holy crap. A vague tension runs underneath the silence. You realize you can't see the soldier's hands. Ooh. Say, stranger, where are you from? I travel. Where you going, Yankee? A bowie knife flies past your head. So close, the wind tickles your ear. It sticks in a tree with a solid thump. It clears the squirrels and birds out of the branches. When you look back, the wounded soldiers nowhere to be found. Get out! The wounded soldier. What kind of story we got here today? This should be interesting. These fellows are lounging around the front half, uh, front of a half-finished office building, taking their lunch break. Hey, one call, it's waving you down. Rick was telling us a story, listen. Story, listen, okay? You tell us if it's bullshit or not. Yeah, sure. Rick, a credulous seeming fellow, starts telling you a story about a poor loser demon summoning hellfire on anyone who beats him at poker. He realizes the story of the arsonist who burns down gambling dens all over the country, but changed in a few major ways. So it's definitely part bullshit, right? But also a little real. It ain't bullshit. 
Half the group room was, how the hell was that supposed to be a real story? Exclaims the man who waved you down. You're all the most gullible pieces of shit I ever met. The other half of the group vindicated shares, I have indicated shares a bottle of pop with you. The story grew in telling the arsonist who burns down the building. Oh, dude, we are getting so many stories going on now. We got a couple more little things to check out here as well. Uh-oh. These folks are setting up a cooking tent in the corner of a fairground. Beyond them, bigger tents rise like clouds. You want to make some cash? The manager asks. A long, hot day is serving funnel cakes and bussing tables in the dining tents, but you're paid well. Yay, me. Okay, we'll check out this right on the border of Georgia, Florida. Ooh, we got another story. A long black car growls up in front of the hotel. Out steps a woman in an extravagant hat and coat, followed by her, followed by a whole crowd of hangers-on. Is she a singer, an actress? You don't recognize her face, but to your surprise, you recognize the story she's telling. In a sharp transatlantic accent, she's telling everyone in her party a story about an apple orchard planter who planted ten thousand trees. It's clearly the story of John Chapman. His orchard and his dog, but changed in a few interweight entertaining ways. Isn't that something, she asks. Her various followers agree. She pays the driver for her uh, out of the limousine and sweeps into the hotel like a thunderstorm of red velvet. Someone should do a picture about it. You hear her exclaim. Nice. And we got another part of the story increased. Ooh, we're heading up to Savannah. Sweet. I love me a Savannah. And we're going to go camp out here for the night. I don't know who's going to be here, but might not make it by a nightfall. Yeah. Almost by South Carolina. All right, what we got? Evening there. You looking for a sermon or just a chat? Maybe a bit of both. Don't really matter, frankly. First thing I ever learned behind the pulpit is that every homily is just a conversation. Damn right. Ain't as one-sided as you might think, either. Amen to that. Preachers ain't shepherds. They're cowboys. They gotta run with the flock, keep them directed without fencing them in. Ooh. So how about you take a seat and guide us somewhere? All right. Anyway, why don't you tell me a scary story? You must have heard some good ones. Oh, dude, I got one. Uh, it's the one in Boston. Uh... How was it? No. Oh, there. This is like the seance story. That's definitely a scary one. Oh, you could rattle a congregation's bones, I bet. <laughs> luck? Forget about luck. Think about necessity. Ooh. See, you focus on luck, you end up dreaming about what if scenarios but ain't nothing promised you hear me that's right buddy you gotta work for it instead think on what you know you can do what you have to do uh -huh. and learn to do it right lately my journey's been pretty ordinary just walking church to church what about you been on any adventure plenty uh we built a bridge uh what the hell was that What the hell? I know it's here somewhere. Oh yeah, the ghost. I forgot about that one. Um, oh yeah. The thirsty cotton pickers too. Uh, but we could also do the story of the farmers who gave me lemonade. Sorry, that kind of thing don't scare me anymore, if that's what you're going for. I wasn't really. You just told me if I was on an adventure. Dreams come true? Well, there are two sorts of dreams. Dreams you live on and dreams you live for. Uh-huh. Heaven is as real as God, but it's a dream you live on. It gets you through the week. Damn right. Promise of the afterlife is a salve for the truncheon bruises. You know any story that brings a person hope? Something I can tell to my congregation? 
Yeah, I do. I just gave a guy hope. Um, where, 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 where? Right there. Um, yeah. Hmm. Tear jerkers need a little more truth in them, I think. That was truthful. You ever notice how different folk think about the future in entirely different ways? Yeah. Talk to a man up in Harlem, hat man, sells hats. And he's talking about quarters and fiscal years. Talk to one of them boys at the Shaw School, they start yapping about automation and aeroplanes. But when I talk to my auntie down in Macon, she can't see past her next payday. <laughs> Some folks don't have the privilege of the future. Hey, do you have any spooky campfire tales? Feels appropriate out here, right? Oh, dude, do I ever. There you go. That's how it is, huh? Well, maybe you ain't seen as much of this world as I have. Sadness? No. A preacher ain't allowed to be sad, except for a certain sort of sadness. You understand? Apparently I'm uh, not getting them right. We have to be sound. We have to lift up the community, challenge injustice. Uh -huh. Folks like me can't be sad for ourselves when it's the congregation that really hurts. Anyway, why don't you tell me a scary story? You must have heard some good ones. Yeah, but everyone I tell you, you're all like, yeah, this sucks, you're a dick. Hmm. Where was the, uh... Nope. Nope. Um... Okay, you know what? I think I'm gonna go with the, uh... That one there might be scary, but I'm not entirely sure how he's going to take it. Oh, you got me for a second with that one. <laughs> Death? Well, Ma died a few years after I was born. Uh -huh. Pops used to tell me she was beautiful and that I had her eyes and her sense of conscience. But he always said it like it was an insult. Ooh. Well, I got to get moving on. I have right. a sermon give in the morning. And the church was a long night of walking that way. All right. So you're going way the hell over there, damn. All right, we'll see you next time, buddy. Walk like you're blessed, child. Because even if you ain't, that's the only way you'll find your holy self. I am blessed, thank you. And achievement unlocked the preacher. We got Jimmy. Jimmy's parable. Parabola. Let's see what we got. No fence, gate, or sign marks the entrance to the cemetery. Just a moment ago, you weren't surrounded by graves, and now you are. How long have you been stepping on dead folks, fully unaware? A couple minutes. A wood board, bleached white, unknown. The word was painted on black by a steady hand, each letter signed with a flourish. Whoever made this memorial had more compassion than money. Um, yeah. You're already quiet, so maybe it's silly. But you instill that silence with intent. What else could someone do? Be still as well. A sparrow calls. Seems birds don't have much respect for the dead. You notice the grave marker isn't dug into the ground, just propped up on a tree. We will straighten it. Looks nicer now, but unmoored as these markers are, this grave in front of this tree, does this memorial even belong to it? Whoa, is there even anybody buried there? Whoa. The lightning starts in the next valley over. Then the wind picks up, the long grass hisses, and suddenly 
It's raining so hard you can barely breathe without a hand over your mouth. That's nuts. I've been in rain like that before. The lightning momentarily illuminates a farmhouse on the opposite hilltop. The only one for miles. Much closer, though, is a silhouette of a dilapidated barn. Let's go to the barn. It's mostly dry here. Perhaps that's why every corner of the barn has a soaked, silent traveler crouching oh, cool. in it. Fifteen or twenty of them, all staring in your direction, all blinking, all curiously dressed in the same brown coat. One silently points you to a spot of your own. He can't rob me because I don't have any money, so... They scurry back and forth across the floor of the barn all night long, whispering to one another. When you wake, it's late, and every single one of them is gone, along with some of your cash. Joke's on you, fool. I spent all my money on a train. What up, Joe? How's it going? Yeah, you're late. About 40 minutes late. Oh, let's move on. So we're in Savannah. Where we're headed is, we already talked to that guy. I think that's the dude we talked to. Yeah, we talked to him. Nice. So maybe what we should do, we made it over there. There's Althea. Ooh. Yeah, it's totally your fault, Joe. Blame Joe. Mm. We could head back up here because I don't think we've been in here yet. And then we could stop and talk to whoever that is as well. So let's just keep walking up the coast. We'll follow this road. And we'll just run into people and things as we do. Yeah. I like it. Sounds like a perfect plan. And we'll also try for a car. See if we can get a, a ride somewhere as well. Yep. Spoke to Althea twice. She's dead. Where the hell are we going to end up? I don't even see anything anywhere around. Nothing. Not a damn thing. No, we talked to Jimmy. We talked to the gambler. And we just talked to the preacher. And now we're heading on our way up. Mixing our way back through wherever the hell it is that we go when we're doing what we do. Ooh, I see something over here. Let's go over here. This looks like it might be interesting. It's a big building, too. It might be like a courthouse or something. Yeah, yeah. The woman finds you as you wander the streets. Come with me, child, she says, looking you up and down. We're going to church. Oh, kick ass. Maybe we'll meet the preacher again. And no, I didn't actually uh, set you myself on fire. to a simple clappered building. There's no steeple, but a cross is painted on one side. Must be a church, then. Inside, after a rousing sermon, you're treated to a meal and given a worn but clean set of clothes. Works and not faith alone might be the motto of this place. No kidding. A mysterious woman who wanted to go to church. What the hell is this? Is this going to take us across the river? Nope. These wolves are setting up a cooking tent in the corner of a fairground. Beyond them, the bigger tent rises like clouds. You want to make some cash, the manager asks. A long, hot day serving funnel cakes and, br and busting tables in the dining tents, but you're paid well. Oh, shit, yeah, those guys did rob me because I did make money. Oops, I forgot about that. My bad. Whatever. Ain't the end of the world. Just money. I'm free, baby. I'm free.
just to break, you know, you break up the monotony. You where migrants have made a campsite. Kick ass. It's been trampled to pieces. A few families are fleeing, running as fast as they can back up to the roadside. An enormous bull stretches himself beside some of their squashed supplies. Ooh, should we take something or should we leave it be? We're probably going to get attacked by the bull if we do it, though. What do you think, Joe? Should we go do it? Huh? Should we, should we, should we, should we, should we? All right, we're going to take it. You inch close. As you are about to grab a bundle, the bull grunts and locks an eye with you. In a voice so like the sound of far-off thunder, you wonder if you've imagined it. He says, Sorry. <laughs> Talking bulls. That's awesome. The bull who terrorized travelers on the road. It terrorized my nightmares now. Freaking talking bull. Pretty cool, though. He just apologized to me. I guess he really didn't want to hurt anyone. He was just hungry. I really wish that they had something for uh, the speed at which I could move my mouse. I gotta do it like four times just to turn that distance across a full mouse pad that's like, I don't know, 14 or 16 inches wide. I was like, what the hell happened to my sound? What's this? A boat. Uh -oh. He leans against a fence and turns to face you as you pass him by. At his back is a bag full of bird seed. He assures you that the gawky birds perching on his body are the last remaining passenger pigeons. Get out. They look extinct to you? You're not sure those dull gray pigeons look anything like the pictures you've seen of passenger pigeons, though you can't help thinking they stare at you a little too intently. Say... You like birds? I love them. They're lovely creatures. Guileless, really. Hunted damn near to extinction, weren't you? He strokes one of his birds under the chin. You think you see drips of blood flecking the creature's dirty gray head. Uh-oh. You sense it's about time you start moving on. You be kind to the little birds now, you hear? You hurry along the road. Though the flapping of ungainly wings seems to follow you for hours. Horrible. He murdered them all. <laughs> Let's go to Richmond, B.C. Wow, we walked really far. We're not even in America anymore. Yeah, these ones were ugly and dying. Is that big dot just to put the name down or... Yeah, it is. Okay. So what we got? Oh, let's hear a story. After gossiping for a while with, about the weather and the crops and the state of the world, all bad and getting worse, he takes a different tack. You look like someone who likes a good story, he wheezes. Try this one on for size. After loudly and repeatedly clearing his throat, he tells you the story of the regiment of time-lost souls recruiting travelers to battle on Boston streets. Sounds a lot like the story of the ancient battles still raging on in Boston streets, but with some parts changed and other parts added. Listen to it. When he grins up at you in the conclusion of the tale, you give him the eff effusive praise he's apparently expecting. You have to remember that version, even if it's not quite what happened. It's a good story. <laughs> yeah, baby. Add him to the story. Clouds roll together to fill the sky. Um, watch this the guy lightning turn. is so strong that it seems to open the path in the haze above you. You are sure you see massive talons curved around the clouds. Sweet. The thunder is so immense that the ground trembles. Your lips and hands tingle from the electric charge that fills the air until the dancing lightning passes on over the hills. Cool story, bro. The massive thunderstorm. 
And now let's have a little fire. Let's see who we got here. Who dis? Little Ben. Sorry, friend, but I gotta ask you not to get no closer unless I can see your hands at all times. <laughs> look too clean to be one of us. But you don't look like the company sent you neither. Nope. All right, I'm gonna share my fire spell. But don't linger. These hills is full of ears. Don't think just cause you can't see no one that you're safe. Why is he sitting in the graveyard? And I'll give you cornbread. Don't be so sure of me neither. And I'll give you cornbread, but don't be so sure of me neither. Nice. See anything exciting out there on the road? Mostly I just seen dogs. Well, we got something exciting for you, dude. Where's that shit in Boston? Yeah, that's exciting. Or scary. I don't know. He might take it. Are you way. trying to scare me? Maybe. Every man in the last meeting I ran could tell you a story scary than that right off the top of his head. Yeah, well, why don't you lick my balls? Death. Yeah. A little tin of morphine some of us carried down so as to die peaceful just in case. Mm -hmm. Some thought it better to die a sinner than to go with death's hand pulling the breath out of your body slow as he goes. Wow, you're dark. I think God would have forgiven it. He would have had to. What do you think? Got any funny stories? Must have a couple. Yeah, apparently I do, but I can't remember. Um. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I know what it is. It's the ones with the ducks. Yeah. The ducks in the hotel. Well, huh. Just seems like wishful thinking to me. What? How's that Joy, not huh? funny, dude? Ducks you in the hotel. You ever hear music in a coal town? Night falls on a Sunday, you hear church singing. Really? Listen for a while, and the cry? Sure enough, it's a cry. Colored folks, harmonicas coming up from one end of it, joining in. Sound of strings from Italy. That type of song has no country. Joe, the hotel story was not funny. That was horrible. That's the guy who set the thing on fire. Killed everybody. It's the sound of the workers' choir. Really? See anything exciting out there on the road? Mostly I... Yes, you've seen exciting shit, all right? Um... Where is it? This one here. The bridge builders. Where we were building and we had something sneak up behind us. You'd be popular at mealtime where I'm from. You'd keep a whole crew glued, I bet. Damn right, buddy. What's freedom? When the community decides what it's worth? Setting the value of things together? Oh, yeah, I did the ducks, but that didn't work. You mean... When you don't answer to nobody. Just think possible, my friend. I don't answer to anyone. Anyway, I need something to laugh about. You got any funny ones? Apparently ducks aren't funny to you, so I'll stay away from those. Travel. Um, that, that's a new story we picked up. It's about a guy who blasted a train horn and made half a kid's uh, cheer and the other half cry. Um, hmm. Arrested for bootlegging. Two men who mistook each other from the missing brother from around Boston. We could do that. That might be funny to him. Um, all right, with death. Seagulls. Uh, story of a boy ran from his father. The pigeon keeper in the northeast. A couple parted by things. Tell the story of a massive thunderstorm. Ghosts passed. That was a scary one. I forgot about that one. Uh, the woman selling griskris in New Orleans. The story of a seance around Birmingham. That was also scary. Mm. Huh. The bootleggers. That's the two women who got busted. Okay. Two, two women bootlegging and uh, arrested for bootlegging. You reading me out of a dime novel? That stuff ain't true. Oh, uh, way to go, Joe. Authority? Bosses? Tch, you ain't worth nothing to them. You're like a pickaxe or a coal cutter. Damn shovel. Yeah, my pickaxe, pickaxe is huge, Joe. You break, you get replaced. It's almost like they're proud of that. Yep. See anything exciting out there on the road? Mostly I just seen dogs. Okay, what the hell is exciting to this little douchebag? Well, it's a thrilling story. Um, what 
Althea's, I think we could tell them Althea's story about the blues, but I don't know, that's kind of sad, isn't it? The exciting story could be about the uh, apple orchard planter who planted 10,000 trees. <laughs> uh, nope. Seance, the poor loser demon is summoned to hellfire and anyone beats him at poker. That's actually the wolf. Or no, that's the guy who actually burnt the buildings down. That's right. Massive thunderstorm. That's exciting. Yeah. Brings me back. There was a there was a time when me and Big Ben could just enjoy exciting stories like this one. Ah, innocent. <laughs> yeah, boy. Home. I always wanted a little place where I could watch the sky change color, watch the cook fire smoke, dance up among the pines. Morning. I gotta get going. Hit it up that way. Won't be specific for my safety and yours. If you want to find me, then do it. Talk again about these things. All right. He's going over to West Virginia. Coal ain't got no country. No worker neither. Worker ain't Virginian, ain't Christian, white, colored, Irish, Polish, nothing. I thought we were done talking, sir. A worker is a worker. And we all got to work. Word. If you're one of them, if you think I sound red, you best come out and say so. Get it over with. No, I think you're a little bit yellow. We got the coal miner. Little bit in chapter two, now available. Where the hell are we? All right, so we're just heading north. We'll just keep going along. Haven't been able to hitchhike at all. Ain't getting nothing done. Wait, wait, where are we going? I guess we're going to one of those two places. One's the train, one's the cross over the water, and then we got uh, the shitty over here. So I'm gonna have to walk over this way. Maryland, West Virginia, the Ohio River. Okay, let's go across. Yeah, no kidding. More like a tomato. <laughs> So we're in Washington. I think we've been here before. What do we have? We can earn some money. Yeah, we've already explored. Um, PB and J, spaghetti, iced tea. And a PB and J. And now we we'll go earn some money. Looking for a way to make some cash. Let's look for work. You hit four factories, but nobody's hiring today. Soon you notice you're cruising around the city with the same loose group of rejected laborers. Coughing men in baggy clothes, women with babies tied to their backs, and an older fellow with only one hand. Nobody wants us. After the fifth factory, everyone makes a silent agreement to give up. You sit on the curb across from the factory doors and eat your sad little lunches together in silence. Screw the city, huh? Oops. Well, let's get the hell out of here, then. Uh, we'll go up and talk to whoever the hell this is. Yeah. Don't you dare hit me. Ow, my feet. Okay, we got to do it up here in Philadelphia, where he was born and raised. He's out in the playground where he spent most of his days. Chilling out, maxing, relaxing, shooting beetle ball. You know what I mean? That guy. Who did this? Mason by Sidney Meeker. Well, look at you. You're still going. A little bit. Me too, obviously. Still headed home. On the road, I'm mostly alone with my thoughts. I... I don't know. You might enjoy it, but it's not always good for me. But I wouldn't be better off staying at home, neither. He's so sad, isn't he, Joe? And, uh, no, we haven't had an opportunity to try. I walked all the way from Florida all the way up here. In a perfect world, I wouldn't have chosen any of this. Do you understand? That's bit. why I'm owed a debt. Oh. Tell me a happy story. Something to make the world seem kind. Dude, do I ever have a story for you? 
Um, yeah, the ducks. He's going to love this shit. I liked that one. <laughs> yeah, you did. There's some hope left for you too, you know. Oh, I got lots of hope. Don't to. give it away too quickly. I actually got stabbed by a lady in New Orleans and she took my blood and I got a leather pouch for it. Joy? Getting your hands into the earth and helping something grow. That'll bring anyone joy. Anyone with a bit of humanity in them. Oh, I got lots of humanity. Humanity oozes out of me. Know any good jokes? I'm not so good at telling them anymore. No kidding. Uh, funny story, huh? Okay, I'm going to try this one here. This is about the railroader. Um... I don't know. He was like in a caboose or something like that, and he pulled the train horn. He's like a salesman kind of thing. We'll see what this guy thinks of it. That can't be true. That sounds like a Navy tale. No. Travel. Well, this walk feels like a little bit of freedom now and again. The flowers along the road make for a fine company. Yeah, there's a guy that plants in 10,000 trees. And then there's the one where everybody got killed with the sugar cane. Do you know any happy stories? Hopeful ones? Oh, God. Probably not. Let's tell one about sadness and death. <laughs> um, couple parted by unemployment. Family of pig fuckers down in Memphis. Man on the beach. That was about hope. He wants, yeah, hope. Yeah. He has, um, this is another one. We were in Miami and we talked to a dude on the beach who just lost his job and we gave him hope and he was all like, yay. <laughs> I don't mean to be rude, but civvies don't understand what real tragedy oh, is. Oh, you're an ass. I can say whatever I want, Joe. The future's the issue, ain't it? For you, apparently, dude. I'm going to cut your leg off and eat it. Great war leaves us nothing to go back to. Plucking up the hope and leaving us only with the vile and the unforgiven. Remind me when I get a gun to find this guy and put him out of his misery. Tell me a happy story. Yeah, okay. Um, we could talk about the people that gave us lemonade. He knows the story about the bridge builders. The story of a woman praying in the woods. Um, grave robber. Shaw's life and times. Uh, two men who mistook each other for brothers. The story of a boy who ran away. Uh -huh. Hopeful story. You know what? Let's talk about the story that we just got. Hey, what up, Andy? Thank you for doing that for me. I couldn't blame Joe for what she did earlier when she first came into the chat, so at least this will make up for it. How you doing, man? Good to see ya. Tell the story of the mysterious woman who wanted to go to church. For a moment there. Just a moment. I felt better about it all, too. Whoa, Joe. Calm down. My faith? Well, God and I haven't been on speaking terms since I got the infection. Uh-oh, he got the jeets. I gave the fucker so many chances to make things right, and he hasn't followed through. Oh, wow. It's probably your shitty attitude. Do you know any happy stories? Hopeful ones? No, I don't. Um... Okay, the lemonade people. Got nightmares enough without hearing that kind of horror. <laughs> I forgot about that. That was the creepy people that were like, fuck off, get off our property. <laughs> we just murdered someone. <laughs> My wishes come true? Yeah. Well, if I could wish for anything, it'd probably be for a nice, plentiful garden away from everyone else. My own land. My own laws. My own Eden. Your own life? Here's the sun. I've got to go. I'm headed up the road this way. Will our paths cross? I sure as hell hope not. 
Yeah, well, that's what I. That's why I said it's gonna cut his leg off, cause then he would be stuck. He wouldn't be able to go anywhere. See the little stump there? I cut this leg off, then he's just gonna be walking around with a crawling around with a crutch. Really do. Why do you have a crutch? When the terrors return, they'll never be able to pay back what they owe me. But I'll always keep at them. What about you? Is there something somebody owes you? Yeah, you, my knight back. Mason, chapter two is available. All right, let's go to Philadelphia. Let's see if we can find Willie. His clothes are expensive, but unkempt. A tailored jacket stretched and warped out of its best fit by long days on the road. His thinning frame weighs down the boxcar next to yours. You got a light, friend? Sure do. You offer a match, which bends and nearly snaps as he scratches it against the pitted iron edge of the boxcar. Thanks, he mumbles. Perching one last cigarette on his lip. Where you Don't going? rightly know where I'm going. You notice how deeply wrinkled his clothes are. It's as though a huge hand plucked him from a high society party and crumpled him up like a sheet of paper. <laughs> Don't rightly know how I got going either. No. They built a railway just past Missy Hudson's estate. Damned racket ruined our soiree. Might have been a few bottles of Armagnac too many when I walked down the tracks to tell them to keep it quiet. <laughs> he drags on the cigarette. But you never see him exhale. It's because he swallowed it. So wait, you just walked on the train tracks for the hell of it? This kindly old woman sharing the shade under the bridge with you shared, tells a few rambling stories. Some true seeming, some conspicuously less so. All true, he assures you. Oh, old man, I thought it was a woman. Uh, there's history in this place going all the way back to the Indian times. Strange stuff happens around here. Can't all be true. Sure it is, he scoffs. And then as to prove himself right, he launches into a story about the fisherman and his fish calling seagulls. And this one, you know, is the story of the seagulls and the fishermen. But wow, they're stranger than you remember. I know that one. See then, the old man laughs. So I ain't following your like. It's all true. The story grew in telling. We got the the bird seagull dude doing his thing. But that's the whole point of the story, Joe. Or the whole point of the game is to blow smoke out your ass. Whoever can blow the biggest puff of smoke out their ass wins. The stream is a clear, reflective shade of blue. Holy shit, it's the double. Unusual in this region, where bog iron colors the river's brown. Across the way, a goat with great leather wings laps up the water. What? Its sunken red eyes fixed on your every movement. Shoot it! You now notice the unnatural absence of wildlife. No fish swim in the stream. No birds sing in the trees. The winged goat drinks with a forked tongue, only abstractly concerned with your presence. Oh, we're talking to the goat. Over the hill, a scorched one-room house lies abandoned, Sweet. two of its four walls in ruins. The goat rears up, front hooves curled, and stretches its wings out to their full breadth. I'm going even closer. The goat opens its mouth and wails. A protracted, shrill sound, indistinguishable from the cry of a human infant. It only begins to stop when you take several steps back. Whoa, now we got a kick-ass scary story. The winged goat doesn't follow. Instead, it lies down inside the burnt house, surrounded by portraits of a large family, glass frames stained brown from smoke. God damn. 
the winged to goat by pristine water. Holy crap. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all next time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Much love, much respect. Take care.